Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is nodal analysis as applied to DC circuits. Our objective today is to learn to employ nodal analysis in an effort to solve for desired electrical quantities for circuits with more than one source. Bottom line up front, nodal and its dorky cousin mesh analysis are obsolete circuit analysis techniques and I simply cannot understand the continued inclusion of these topics in basic electronics courses. The only reason I'm including these topics in the Basic Electronics 1 DC Circuit Analysis playlist is out of sheer pity for those students enrolled in basic electronics classes whose instructors force them to learn and use these techniques. Nodal, like mesh analysis, is unnecessarily complicated, of limited use, and has been largely replaced by software circuit analysis. This being said, nodal analysis is elegant, cool, and makes an excellent party trick when in the company of nerds. Let it never be said that I labeled nodal analysis ineffective, but rather unnecessary and unimportant when compared to other circuit analysis skills and practical hands-on exposure to instrumentation and equipment. There are special occasions in which nodal analysis is the perfect fit, but those occasions are so few and so far between, they're really not worth the trouble of you dedicating countless hours of your precious life to the study of nodal analysis. For students enrolled in my particular basic electronics course, you'll be happy to know that this lecture is extremely optional. If you are one of my students, in place of this lecture, I'm asking you to go get yourself a crazy girlfriend, a deadbeat boyfriend, or a dog that frequently runs off and bites litigious people. Any of these situations are far more exciting than learning nodal analysis. If you're still with me, either you're completely bored or more than likely being compelled to learn this technique by your instructor because their instructor made them learn it when they went through basic electronics class 50 years ago. We are not going to dilly-dally with this technique too much and we're going to rip this figurative bandage off rather quickly and get us over and past this otherwise easily avoidable bump in the road of forward progress. Nodal analysis makes use of simultaneous linear algebra techniques to solve for equations with more than one unknown, where the unknown quantity being solved for is voltage at a particular node with respect to some previously agreed upon reference node. Voltage is a two-point measurement. Nodal analysis makes heavy use of Kirchhoff's current law, and this lecture operates under the presumption you are skilled in this technique. If you haven't watched the Kirchhoff's current lecture yet, or only dimly recall its contents, by all means take the time to do so now. I'll teach you just enough mathematic mumbo jumbo to get you through nodal analysis if you promise to meet me halfway by showing up prepared with a solid understanding of Kirchhoff's current law. Fair warning, nodal analysis necessitates nearly identical math skills we already reviewed in the mesh analysis lecture, and this lecture operates under the presumption you have mastered these skills. Specifically, you need to be mathematically competent enough to algebraically manipulate multivariable equations into a recommended general format of Ax plus By equals C for a two-variable equation, or Ax plus By plus Cz equals D for a three-variable equation, where A, B, C, and D are constants. Finally, you need to be capable of entering matrices into your scientific calculator and using the reduced row echelon format function to solve for the unknown quantities of x, y, and sometimes z. If you want to be hard-headed, you can also manually calculate the unknown quantities using determinants. If you feel incapable or unqualified to do this task, by all means, watch the first 10 minutes of the mesh analysis lecture and then beat feet right back here to pick up where you left off. I'll be right here waiting for you until you get back. Before we continue our discussion of nodal analysis, I'm asking you to conduct a mathematical self-assessment to see if you are qualified to do so. See if you can algebraically manipulate these multivariable equations into the recommended general format of Ax plus By equals C. Resist the temptation to combine these two equations into a single expression. All I'm asking you to do is to independently arrange each equation such that the unknown quantity x has a single constant in front of it, as does y, and the summation or difference of these values equal another constant. Once you've obtained the general format, see if you can enter this 2 by 3 matrix into your scientific calculator and use the reduced row echelon format function, or use manual determinant calculations, to solve for the unknown quantities of x and y. If you perform these steps correctly, you arrange the equations as such. 
and found that the variable x to be 43.2 and the variable y to be 38.4. Note I included the algebraic steps I used to arrive at these answers. They may be different than the steps you used, however, the end results should be the same. If you obtain different results, by all means, pause the lecture and check out the steps I used and correct any misconceptions you may have. If you're totally lost, again, check out the first 10 minutes of the mesh analysis lecture where I review these techniques. If you're totally, totally lost, it may help to go all the way back to the DC math lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel and revisit basic algebraic manipulation. Remember, equations describe an equality, and for equations to remain valid, equality must be maintained. One may add, subtract, multiply, divide, raise to any power, or perform any operation on any side of an equation as long as that same operation is performed on the other side of the equation. In fact, the only operation one may perform to one side and not the other is multiplying it by one, which as we learned in the unit conversion lecture is actually quite a handy technique. You'll note that I did not take the steps necessary to simplify the summation of fractions. Using this technique, I'm saving myself time and letting my scientific calculator do the work for me. Try the second example problem on for size. See if you can algebraically manipulate these three multivariable equations into the recommended general format of ax plus by plus cz equals d. Resist the temptation to combine these three equations into a single expression. All I'm asking you to do is to independently arrange each equation such that the unknown quantity x has a single constant in front of it, as does y and z, and the summation or difference of these values equal another constant. Once you've obtained the general format, see if you can enter this 3 by 4 matrix into your scientific calculator and use the reduced row echelon format function or use manual determinant calculations to solve for the unknown quantities of x, y, and z. If you perform these steps correctly, you arrange the equations as such and found that the variable x to be 5.79, the variable y to be 6.43, the variable z to be approximately 11.44. Note again, I did not simplify for the fractions and simply entered them into the matrix editor as summations and let the scientific calculator take it from there. If you obtain different results, by all means, pause the lecture and check out the steps I used and correct any misconceptions you may have. This ends the self-assessment. If you successfully solve for both sets of multivariable equations, I hereby declare you mathematically competent enough to view the remaining contents of the nodal analysis lecture. If your self-assessment indicates that you are less than mathematically competent, please take the time necessary to bring yourself up to speed and step back in the ring. Let us now discuss nodal analysis to solve for desired electrical quantities for circuits with more than one source. Before we begin, I must again remind you that nodal analysis makes heavy use of Kirchhoff's current law and this lecture operates under the presumption you are skilled in this technique. Additionally, you should be reasonably savvy enough to understand that the current through a resistor is equal to the voltage drop across it divided by its resistance via Ohm's law, I equals V divided by R. Finally, I'll add a twist to Ohm's law by making use of single subscript voltages. Recall that voltage is a two-point measurement. If a resistor is strung between a node and the node being employed as a reference, the voltage drop across the resistor is quite simply that particular nodal voltage. If however a resistor is strung between two nodes independent of the reference node, the voltage drop across the resistor is the difference between the two nodes where the polarity of the voltage drop is determined by the direction of assumed current. For example, consider resistor 1 strung between nodes X and Y. If we assume the current leaving node X is traveling from X to Y, it can be said that the voltage drop across this resistor is Vx minus Vy. Therefore, the current through it is Vx minus Vy divided by R1. Note the operation Vx minus Vy is over the division operator. This implies subtraction occurs before division. Parentheses can make this obvious. One can also distribute the R1 term as such and rearrange it such that 1 over R1, a constant, is front of the unknown voltage variables, where I1 is now equal to 1 over R1 
times Vx minus 1 over R1 times Vy. Conversely, if we assume current leaving node Y is traveling in this direction from Y to X, it can be said that the voltage drop across this resistor is Vy minus Vx. Therefore, the current through it is Vy minus Vx divided by R1. Do you see what's going on here? It's just a trick of perspective. Both equations describe the same current. However, they describe it from the perspective of different nodes under the assumption, true or otherwise, that an unknown current is leaving it. I use a four-step approach when employing nodal analysis to solve for desired electrical properties. We'll go over each step in detail during the illustrated example problems. However, the four general steps are as follows. Step one, determine the number of relevant nodes in the circuit where current has a choice of paths. A series combination of two elements in this case would not be considered a relevant node since current through elements in series is the same. Step two, from these relevant nodes, assign a reference node from which all other relevant nodes will be measured. If your circuit already includes a ground reference, it would be an act of monumental stupidity to choose any node other than this node as the reference. Step three, perform a KCL analysis of each of the remaining nodes under the assumption, true or not, that all unknown currents are leaving it. This means that elements strung between two relevant nodes may have two different current directions through it depending on which node is being used to determine the perspective. The direction of known current sources entering or leaving the relevant nodes are unaffected. Step four, finally algebraically manipulate the KCL equations for each relevant node using the AX plus BY equals C format for a two variable equation or the AX plus BY plus CZ equals D format for a three variable equation. Enter the resulting matrix into your scientific calculator and use the RREF function to solve for the unique solutions of X, Y, and sometimes Z, where the quantities X, Y, and Z are voltages at the relevant nodes with respect to the previously agreed upon reference node. One can then use these nodal voltages to solve for remaining circuit properties like current and power. Consider this series parallel circuit with two sources, a 72 volt voltage source and a two amp current source. Let's apply the four step nodal analysis approach to solve for the voltage drop across and the current through each resistive element. Step one, determine the number of relevant nodes. Here are the two relevant nodes I'll call Vx and Vi where current has a choice of paths. Since this circuit already includes a ground reference, we'll consider this node as our reference node. Now we need to perform a KCL analysis of each node under the assumption that all unknown current is leaving the node. The direction of known currents is unaffected. We'll assume IA leaves node X in the following direction, IB leaves node X in the following direction, and because this is a known current source, two amps will leave in the following direction. The KCL equation for node X is therefore IA plus two plus IB equals zero, where IA is defined as the voltage drop across the nine ohm resistor divided by its resistance. Given the nine ohm resistor is strung between node X and the positive lead of the 72 volt voltage source, the voltage drop across it is therefore Vx minus 72 and current IA is Vx minus 72 divided by nine. Current IB is the current through the four ohm resistor where the voltage drop across this resistor is Vx minus Vy since it's strung between the two unknown nodal voltages. Therefore current IB is Vx minus Vy divided by four. Note since we are assuming all current is leaving this node, this also means that zero current is entering it. We'll find that our later answers for nodal voltages will clarify which current is entering and leaving based off magnitude and polarity. For node Y, we'll assume current ID is leaving in the following direction, and we'll assume unknown current IE is leaving the following direction, and since we have a known current source, we have two amps entering node Y. Our KCL equation for node Y is therefore ID plus IE equals two. Given the assumed direction of ID, we can state that the voltage drop across the four ohm resistor is Vy minus Vx. 
Therefore, current ID is VY minus VX divided by 4. Additionally, since the 12 ohm resistor is strung between nodal voltage Y and our reference, it can be stated the voltage drop across it is VY. Therefore, current IE is VY minus 12. Now we can algebraically manipulate these KCL equations into the general format of AX plus BY equals C. The X nodal equation is 1 9th plus 1 4th times VX minus 1 4th VY equals 6. The Y nodal equation yields minus 1 quarter VX plus 1 quarter plus 1 12th VY equals 2. This can be entered into a 2 by 3 matrix where the RREF function yields VX to be approximately 43.2 volts and VY to be approximately 38.4 volts. These nodal voltages can now be used to solve for other circuit properties. The current through the 9 ohm resistor is equal to the voltage drop across it divided by its resistance. The voltage drop across the 9 ohm resistor is 72 volts minus 43.2 volts. Therefore, the current through it is 3.2 amps. The current through the 4 ohm resistor is the voltage drop across it divided by its resistance. The left side of the resistor is at 43.2 volts and the right side of the 4 ohm resistor is at 38.4 volts. Therefore, there is a 4.8 volt differential across it. This 4 ohm resistor is therefore carrying 1.2 amps from left to right. The current through the 12 ohm resistor is 38.4 volts divided by 12 ohms or 3.2 amps. A KCL analysis of this circuit confirms these facts. If 3.2 amps of current enters node X, 1.2 amps flows through the 4 ohm resistor left to right and 2 amps flows to the current source left to right. If 2 amps and 1.2 amps of current enter node Y, 3.2 amps of current leaves it. Iterations of Ohm's law can solve for the individual voltage drop across each component, and then Kirchhoff's voltage law can be used to verify these values. Starting here and traveling in this direction, we have a rise of 72 volts, a drop of 28.8 volts, a drop of 4.8 volts, and a drop of 38.4 volts where the sum of rises does indeed equal the sum of drops. I'm reasonably confident our answers are correct. If you had issues with this example problem, please take the time to revisit it and correct any misconceptions you may have. Very often it is not the electrical concepts, but rather the algebraic manipulations and the proper use of the scientific calculator that trips students up when employing nodal analysis for the first time. A misplaced positive or negative sign can have disastrous consequences. Perform the KCL analysis at each relevant node carefully, accounting for the direction of unknown current. Take your time when algebraically manipulating the equations and placing them in the recommended format. Finally, enter the matrices into your calculator carefully and check your work. That's the purpose of the KCL and KVL analysis I did at the end of this example problem. Don't trust your calculator and always treat results as suspect until verified by other means. Let's try another illustrated example problem of nodal analysis. By all means, pause the lecture and take a shot at this if you feel confident. See if you can use the four-step nodal analysis techniques to solve for the voltage across and the current through each resistive element. But before you do, I'm asking you to take advantage of some previously discussed circuit analysis techniques that might make this circuit a little bit easier to solve for, notably source conversion. Note the 18 volt source in series with a 60 ohm resistor. One could do a source conversion where a current source is placed in parallel with the resistor. You don't necessarily need to perform this technique. However, since nodal analysis is based off Kirchhoff's current law, it's actually much easier to solve for the KCL equations when all the sources are converted into current sources. In this case, the 18 volt source in series with a 60 ohm resistor can be replaced with a 300 milliampere current source in parallel with a 60 ohm resistor. This source conversion yielded a current source. However, the additional path in parallel means we'll have an extra term in our KCL equation. Given that these two resistors are directly in parallel with one another, these can be combined into a single resistor with a value of 30 ohms. Again, the source conversion and parallel resistor combination aren't exactly necessary to begin the nodal analysis. However, it does simplify the circuit. 
Okay, you're on your own. See if you can use the four-step nodal analysis techniques to solve for the voltage drop and the current through each resistive element. This is my node X. This is my node Y. I'm going to use the ground reference as my reference. 300 milliampers of current enters node X. And let's say IA leaves this direction and IB leaves that direction. The KCL equation for node X is therefore IA plus IB equals 300 milliampers. IA is therefore VX divided by 30 and IB is VX minus VY divided by 120. For node Y, we'll assume unknown current ID is leaving it in this direction. Unknown current IE is leaving it in this direction and a known quantity of 150 milliampers is leaving it in this direction. The KCL equation for node Y is therefore ID plus IE plus 150 milliampers equals zero, where ID is VY minus VX divided by 120, and IE is VY divided by 60. Again, note that all unknown current values are assumed to leave this node. We can now algebraically manipulate the KCL equations into the AX plus BY equals C format. The KCL equation for node X yields 1 over 30 plus 1 over 120 times VX minus 1 over 120 times VY equals 300 milliampers. Algebraically manipulating the equation for node Y yields negative 1 over 120 times VX plus 1 over 120 plus 1 over 60 times VY equals negative 150 milliampers. We can now enter these equations into 2 by 3 matrix where the reduced row echelon format function yields a value of VX to be approximately 6.43 volts and VY to be approximately negative 3.86 volts. These nodal voltages can then be used to solve for other circuit properties. Given the 120 ohm resistor is strung between nodes X and Y, the voltage differential is equal to VX minus VY. Given the polarity of VY is already negative, it can be said that 6.43 minus a minus 3.86 volts yields a voltage drop of 10.29 volts across the 120 ohm resistor. And Ohm's law therefore states that approximately 85.7 milliampers of current will flow through it left to right. Therefore, the polarity of the voltage drop across the 120 ohm resistor will be left to right, positive to negative. Given our 60 ohm resistor is strung between our ground reference node, assumed to be zero volts, and VY at a value of negative 3.86 volts, it can be stated that the voltage drop across the 60 ohm resistor is 3.86 volts, where polarity positive to negative is from bottom to top. With this voltage differential across the 60 ohm resistor, Ohm's law states that 64.3 milliampers of current will flow through it from bottom to top. Again, this should not be surprising to you. Ground is merely a reference. VY is lower than ground and current will flow from our reference to node Y, bottom to top. In this case, 85.75 milliampers of current enters node Y, as does 64.33 milliampers, and the summation of 85.75 plus 64.33, or 150 milliampers of current, leaves it. With our current level of simplification, the voltage drop across our simplified 30 ohm resistor is 6.43 volts meaning approximately 214.33 milliampers of current travels through it. At node X, 300 milliampers of current enters it, and 214.33 plus 85.75 milliampers of current leaves it. Kirchhoff's current law checks out for each node, as does Kirchhoff's voltage law for any loop accounting for polarity. Returning to our previous level of simplification, we can break the 30 ohm resistor into the two parallel 60 ohm resistors, and then return to our original source configuration of a voltage source in series with a 60 ohm resistor, where this 60 ohm resistor experiences 18 minus 6.43 or an 11.57 volt drop, where Ohm's law states approximately 192.8 milliampers of current will travel through it left to right. And this 60 ohm resistor, still with a 6.43 volt drop across it, will experience approximately 107.17 milliampers of current.
a quick KCL check confirms that these values are not in error. When 192.8 milliampers of current enters the node, 192.8 milliampers of current leaves the node. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct. Let's try another illustrated example problem. Consider this complex series parallel circuit. In this case, there is only one source. However, the complex arrangement of resistors makes traditional series parallel circuit analysis somewhat difficult. Those with an understanding of delta Y conversions recognize an opportunity. However, nodal analysis can yield the same results. One might assume we have four relevant nodes, necessitating four equations with four variables. However, the node at the very top is a pure series connection of two 50 ohm resistors. And being that current through series elements is the same, is not necessarily considered relevant for our purposes. In this case, the 250 ohm resistors can be combined in series, leaving us three relevant nodes and one previously agreed upon reference node. By all means, pause the lecture and see if you can solve for the voltage across and the current through each resistive element using the four-step nodal analysis techniques. The KCL equation for node X is as follows, which can be grouped into the three variable general format as one over 20 plus one over 20 plus 1 over 100 times Vx, minus 1 over 20 Vy, minus 1 over 100 Vz equals 0. The KCL nodal equation for node Y can be written as follows, and when placed in the general format, yields negative 1 over 20 Vx, plus 1 over 20, plus 1 over 30 Vy, minus 1 over 30 Vx equals 450 milliampers. The KCL nodal equation for node Z can be written as follows, and when placed in the general format, yields negative 1 over 100 Vx minus 1 over 30 Vy plus 1 over 30 plus 1 over 100 plus 1 over 40 Vz equals 0. These equations can be placed into a 3 by 4 matrix, and the reduced row echelon format function can be used to solve for the unknown quantities Vx, Vy, and Vz. Doing so yields a value of 5.79 volts for Vx, 11.44 volts for Vy, and approximately 6.43 volts for Vz. These nodal voltages can now be used to solve for other electrical properties. This 20 ohm resistor will experience a 5.79 volt drop and will therefore experience 289.5 milliampers of current top to bottom. This 20 ohm resistor will experience 11.44 minus 5.79 or 5.65 volt drop, positive to negative, right to left, and will therefore experience approximately 282.5 milliampers of current right to left. The 100 ohm resistor will experience 6.43 minus 5.79 or 0.64 volt drop, positive to negative, right to left and will therefore experience a current of approximately 6.4 milliampers right to left. The 30 ohm resistor will experience approximately 11.44 minus 6.43 or 5.01 volts drop across it. It will therefore experience approximately 167 milliampers of current through it left to right. The 40 ohm resistor will experience approximately 6.43 volt drop across it and will therefore experience approximately 160.75 milliampers of current traveling through it top to bottom. Given our current source is supplying 450 milliampers of current to node Y, it can be said 450 milliampers of current leaves it, being the summation of 282.5 and approximately 167 milliampers. At node X, 6.4 milliampers and 282.5 milliampers does in fact yield the amount of 289.5 milliampers of current leaving it. At node Y, the quantities of 160.75 milliampers and approximately 6.4 milliampers does in fact yield the approximately 167 milliampers of current supplied to it. Kirchhoff's current law checks out for each node, and I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct. Recall our previous simplification saw us combine two 50 ohm resistors in series to a 100 ohm resistor. In this case, both 50 ohm resistors in series with one another will drop equal amounts of voltage, being 0.32 volts, the summation of which is the 0.64 volt differential from node Z to node X. 
All right, that's enough example problems for today. By this time, you should feel confident enough to apply nodal analysis without any outside assistance. If you're still having issues, please take the time to revisit this lecture and correct any misconceptions you may have about this technique. Again, very often it is not necessarily the electrical concepts, but rather the algebraic manipulations and proper use of the scientific calculator that trips students up when employing nodal analysis for the first time. A misplaced positive or negative sign can have disastrous consequences. Perform the KCL analysis at each relevant node carefully, accounting for the direction of unknown current. The direction of known current sources is unaffected. Take your time when algebraically manipulating the equations and placing them in the recommended format. Finally, enter the matrices into your calculator carefully and check your work. Don't trust your calculator and always treat results as suspect until verified by other means like KCL or KVL. Lastly, let me clarify my opinion on nodal analysis. At the beginning of this lecture, I came down pretty hard on this technique. But for those of you that took offense to this, too bad. You're wrong. Nodal analysis does not belong in a Basic Electronics 1 DC circuit analysis class for this very important reason. Most career fields will never, ever, ever make use of this technique. And those instructors that insist upon taking up class time to discuss it are wasting precious moments of your life. The simplest and cheapest of computers can perform circuit analysis and simulation of complicated multi-source networks. The reason I'm so insistent upon manual analysis of series, parallel, and series parallel circuits is that they present fundamental circuit properties essential for later progression in this playlist. Current through elements in series is the same. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. What goes up must come down, and what goes in must come out. You simply must understand these fundamental behaviors. Mesh and nodal analysis are nice techniques to know. However, if a computer can do this for you, let the computer do it for you. Go do something fun or practice other career essential skills instead. This being said, there are occasions in which mesh and nodal analysis are the tools of choice. For example, consider circuits containing dependent sources, sources whose magnitudes are dependent upon other circuit quantities. Dependent sources take the form of voltage-controlled current sources, current-controlled current sources, voltage-controlled voltage sources, and current-controlled voltage sources. These are often schematically represented as diamonds, where the output property, voltage or current, is some function of the external control property, voltage or current, times some constant with the appropriate transfer function units. How does one solve for an electrical quantity when that electrical quantity is dependent upon a source whose magnitude is dependent upon that electrical quantity? This is the ultimate causality dilemma. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Mesh and nodal analysis techniques, however, yield the answers rather quickly. By all means, pause the lecture and take a stab at this if you feel confident, lucky, or merely inquisitive. In this case, we've got a current-controlled voltage source, where the magnitude of this voltage source is 0.1 amps per unit of volts times V in, where V in is the voltage drop across the 40 ohm resistor with the given polarity. Note that the polarity of the input voltage and the direction of the current source are crucial to the correct solution of this problem. I'll start by assigning nodes where this is node X, this is node Y, and this is my reference node. The KCL nodal equation for node X is as follows, where all unknown current is assumed to leave this node. This can be placed in the general format as 1 over 20 plus 1 over 40 plus 1 over 50 times VX minus 1 over 50 times Vy equals 300 milliamperes. The KCL nodal equation for node Y is as follows. Note that the current leaving the right-hand side of node Y is defined as 0.1 V in, where V in could be better described as the voltage drop across the 40 ohm resistor, where the voltage drop across the 40 ohm resistor is Vx minus 12 with the indicated polarity where when placed in the general format yields minus 1 over 50 plus 0.1 times Vx 
plus 1 over 50 plus 1 over 30 times Vy equals 1.2. These two two-variable equations can be placed into a 2 by 3 matrix. The reduced row echelon format can then be used to solve for the unknown quantities Vx and Vy. Vx is determined to be 6 volts, and Vy is determined to be 13.5 volts. These nodal voltages can then be used to solve for other desired electrical properties. Given there is 12 volts on the bottom of the 40 ohm resistor and 6 volts at the top, it can be said that there is a 6 volt differential across it with a given polarity positive to negative bottom to top. In this case, given the polarity of V in, V in is determined to be negative 6 volts. When multiplied by the transfer function of 0.1 amps per volt, this yields a current source magnitude of negative 600 milliampers, which in reality means positive 600 milliampers is being forced upwards by this current source. With a 13.5 volt drop across a 30 ohm resistor, Ohm's law states that approximately 450 milliampers of current will travel through it. The voltage drop across the 50 ohm resistor is 13.5 volts minus 6 volts, or 7.5 volts. Ohm's law states that 150 milliampers of current will travel through it. Given there is 6 volts across the 40 ohm resistor, 150 milliampers of current will travel through it. Given there is also a 6 volt drop across a 20 ohm resistor, Ohm's law states that there will be 300 milliampers of current traveling through it. At node X, 300 milliampers of current enters it, and 300 milliampers of current leaves it. At node Y, 600 milliampers of current enters it, and 600 milliampers of current leaves it. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct. Again, I'm willing to wager you're not going to be presented with problems of this complexity without access to a computer. However, if you ever backed into an alley by a threatening gang of nerds, this technique is sure to show them you are not a person to be trifled with. Masters of nodal analysis are highly regarded in the nerd community, and you'll most likely be accepted as a distinguished member of their society, if not their outright leader. Outside of the nerd community, people largely don't care about nodal analysis, and you'll be just another nerd that does nerd-like things. In conclusion, we learned to employ nodal analysis in an effort to solve for desired electrical quantities for circuits with more than one source. The carryover value for this technique is dubious in our modern society, but does present certain advantages for dependent source analysis. Remember to view these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.